What's up, gang? This is Ken Zerk, Ken Zilling, and Zika Milling, and the Venom from the Trinity, and we are back on Fate Stay Night. Last episode, we beat the brakes off of that bitch ass Shinji. We made up with Saber. You know, we, we basically, we, we officially um made a deal with Saber that we would work together. All right, if y'all are liking the Fate episodes, you might, you might have noticed already, but if y'all are liking the Fate episodes, I'm also doing Tsukihime. I'm trying to have them going, you know, back and forth, back and forth. And while I'm recording these, I'm also recording, you know, Persona 5. Once I beat that game, I'm gonna start dropping it. And I'm also recording um, Danganronpa. Once I beat that game, I'm gonna start dropping it as well. Just to avoid spoilers, you feel me? I'm also recording Umineko. Once I beat the first, once I beat episode one, I'm gonna start uploading it. You know, avoid spoilers while looking for thumbnails. Um, Phoenix Wright as well. I, uh, once I finish the next chapter, I'ma upload it. But peace out. Uh, no, not peace out. The fuck. All right, February 9th, Fate, Day Ten, Skyscraper, Skyscraper. All right, what the hell are we getting into? I'm having a bad dream. My body, injured as it is, demands long, deep sleep. But, but my mind is still stuck replaying all that happened today. It won't let me rest peacefully. My body, still not fully healed, is burning. My mind is plagued with guilt. I think I'm crying out of my sleep. As I sleep, my dream drags on. How many victims were there? Kosaka said there were no deaths, but that might just be the official story. No way does someone come out unscathed after having their life force ripped from them. They could suffer any number of long-term physical problems in years to come, or even brain damage from lack of oxygen. Some students even had severe skin damage. Even if they heal, they'll likely have scars for the rest of their lives. My body hurts. I nearly died today. No, I did die today. A convulsion rocks my whole body. Bad luck for everyone who got sucked into this today, but you did well, Shiro. I stopped a catastrophe. I mean, you stopped a catastrophe and you did it by taking a wound that would normally kill you. There's nothing to feel guilty about. The pain tries to tell me to just go to sleep. The pain is keeping you up, hypocritical eyes. No, I can't make excuses for myself. It doesn't matter. There was a disaster and I just happened to be there, but I couldn't do anything. They're saying I saved lives, but I didn't save anyone, not one person. If only this had just been a mistake, if only it hadn't happened, then my mind would be at peace and I could sleep. I'm pissed off. It's absurd. My heart complaining like this when my body is already so weak. There won't be a miracle like that. Just wishing for a do-over because things didn't go well or were so terrible that they should have never happened is pathetic. You can't take back what's already done. It's not possible and shouldn't be attempted anyway. So I can't just pretend all that didn't happen. There's only one way I can't, there's only one thing I can do. Make sure I do everything I possibly can to prevent anything like that from ever happening again. That's enough sleep. I can worry about my body later. If I can move, I should wake up and hit the ground running. If my goal is to make sure no one is hurt, I need to push myself to the verge of death. I open my eyes. I take one deep breath, filling my lungs with air. <sighs> the frigid winter air dispels my drowsiness almost instantly. I realize it's just past six in the morning. Habits really are extraordinary things. My body must have been part, at least partly recovered since I'm waking up at my usual time. Yes. Okay. I stand up and fold up my futon blanket. The instant I undertake even such a mundane task, intense pain spikes to my left shoulder. Oh. Yeah, I, I guess I'm not completely healed. It's only pain though. This is far better than what I felt when Berserker tore out my stomach the other day. 
When that happened, my insides felt like they were slush, and the nausea was far more intense than the pain. I head out to the hallway. The sunlight is muted by the gloom outside. It's cloudy. Looks like it's gonna rain. Shiro, have you awoken? Yeah, I just woke up. You're up early. You're usually asleep around now. Yeah, Saber's tip not typically um uh, fuck. Saber's not typically up so long before breakfast. Shiro, I do not sleep because I want to. I have mentioned this before, but I only sleep until breakfast to conserve my magical energy. I would appreciate you not suggesting that I have been merely sleeping in. What? I didn't mean for it to sound like that. I was more asking if it was okay for you to be awake so early. Oh, were you? So you were saying that you find me being an early riser odd. Saber sounds crabby. <laughs> Maybe it's my imagination. Saber doesn't seem quite as reserved as usual. No, I didn't say it was strange. I was just wondering if it was okay. <laughs> it's my fault that you need to sleep so much, so... Don't you need to sleep as much as possible today too? Of course. But I'm simply remaining on standby. I'm sleeping in anticipation of emergencies. So I do not think it is logical for me to sleep right now. What do you mean, it's not logical? We're not fighting anybody right now. Nobody's attacking us. Uh, um, well, that is... <laughs> Saber stumbling over her words. Seems like there's something she doesn't want to say. Well, whatever. There's no emergency, so you should sleep until the next time we go out. I'll call you up when breakfast's ready, so just save your strength until then. I'm gonna need your help all day today. I head to the kitchen. Please wait, Shiro. Huh? What, you have something else? What did you just say you were going to do? I hold my breath, barely realizing I'm doing it. She's asked me something, but her eyes are preventing me from giving an answer. You should be resting. Rain will prepare breakfast. Your priority is recuperating in your room and letting your body heal. If you do not understand this, then I will not hear your answer to my question. Uh, Saber. Saber's being so stern because she's genuinely concerned about me. What a sweetie. Please return to your room, Shiro. You were the one who should be sleeping, not me. Saber sees right through me and glares at me all the more intensely. But still, I can't let Shinji, I can't let Shinji let loose. We gotta go kill that nigga! We gotta go kill that nigga! This is my, my mic is showing on the camera. I just realized that. Hope it doesn't annoy y'all. No, I'm not going back to my room. I've rested enough and there are things I need to do. Once we're ready, let's head out to town, Saber. We're gonna catch Shinji today. Why? There was no particular reason we need to capture Ryder's master today. If we are to fight, we should do it after your wounds have healed. It will not be too late. You've got it wrong, Saber. If we're setting priorities, my body is at the bottom of the list. We don't have the luxury of waiting. You know exactly what Shinji's willing to do. We need to separate him from Ryder before they make another bounded field. He won't be a threat if he doesn't have a servant. So you were saying you do not want more victims, like yesterday. Is that why you are doing this? Not to defeat Ryder's master? That's not true. I'm gonna hold Shinji accountable. To do that, we need to defeat Ryder. And it's the right thing to do, to prevent more victims. That's the most important reason we have to fight. I see. If that is Master's command, I will obey. Hold on! Yo, we finally on the same page! Find Shinji? Well, I don't really have a problem with that, but you're saying it's because you think you have a chance of winning, right? It's after breakfast. That's Tosaka's immediate response when I said we can't just let Shinji remain on the run. Huh? You're asking about my chances of beating Shinji? That's right. I'll be honest here. If you're planning on going up against a master without a hope of winning, I'm gonna die laughing. Um, crap. Now that she mentions it, I've really only thought about stopping Shinji. 
I haven't given much thought to the details or any. Uh, Emiya, are you serious? Sorry, laugh all you want. Oh, wow. Sorry, that's really not funny. That reaction makes it clear just how stupid I'm being. I want to curl up into a little ball and hide. Saber, your master's talking nonsense, so what do you think? Do you have a problem with fighting Ryder? I have no qualms about fighting Ryder. I have already assessed her strength. And I believe Shiro has also gauged her abilities. He confronted her directly as well. Oh, really? So Shiro knows how strong she is too. Osaka looks my way, her eyes curious. She obviously wants to know about how strong Ryder is. True, I do have something of an assessment. Maybe it's because I've formed a contract with a servant. Or maybe it's because of the power of the command spells. She may not be my servant, but I have some understanding of her ability since I've seen her fight. Ryder wasn't an especially strong servant. Ryder isn't as strong as Saber. If they fight one-on-one, -on -one, I don't see Saber losing. I see. So you do have a chance at winning. Shinji's not a maid, so Ryder can't get any support from her master. So it'll come down to a duel between Saber and Ryder. So Sokka's right. As long as Shinji's a master, Ryder has to fight on her own. Saber shouldn't be at a disadvantage, but... Why the long face? Is there a problem? Yeah, listen, Tosaka. Even though Saber had Ryder cornered, and Saber is way superior in combat, Ryder managed to escape with Shinji. I think it was Ryder's noble phantasm. The arrow of light that tore through the hallway. If Saber hadn't shoved me to the ground, that wave of destruction would have completely annihilated me. If that was Ryder's ace in the hole, we shouldn't take her lightly, even if she is weaker. So that means Ryder's one of those types whose noble phantasm is more powerful than a servant himself. So Saber, Shiro aside, you must have been able to tell what Ryder's noble phantasm was, right? You should have some idea because it's since it was deployed in front of you. I must apologize. I was so intent on protecting Shira, I was not able to determine what it was. Had I taken the time to do so, Shira and I would have been caught up in it. Caught up in it? Is Ryder's noble phantasm a projectile? It certainly seems similar to one. It can lightly be classified as something close to your magecraft. That was not an anti-personnel noble phantasm like my sword or lancer spear. It's close to my magecraft. That doesn't sound right. Your magic resistance is god tier. Modern magecraft just can't hurt you. If there was a magecraft you actually needed to avoid, it would be... Yes, mystics would have to... Mystics would have to be nullified with even stronger mystics. The only type of mystics that can penetrate my armor would be what you call true magic or phantasmals of the divine realm. True magician? Are you trying to say Ryder is a mage? No, I did not feel that much magical energy from her. She is Ryder. If there is a true magician around, it could only be casting. Ryder's noble phantasm is likely something different. Saber's answers gives a sigh of relief from Tosaka. I don't quite get what's going on, though. Saber, is your armor that strong? You say only true magic can penetrate it. So does that mean Lancer's gay bulk is true magic? Uh, yes, you're right. Lancer's gay bulk is a curse, close in power to true magic. Rin, would you care to explain this to Shiro? Me? Well, fine. Let's just cut to the chase. You believe Saber can only be answered by true magic, right? Uh, well, that's not what I'm saying. But I just thought it was amazing that her armor is that strong. Of course it's amazing. All servants are heroic spirits, not just Saber, you know? They're spirits, so they can't be harmed by ordinary means since servants themselves are mystics. Only fellow servants, since they are also heroic spirits, can physically harm other servants. On the flip side, so long as we're dealing with the servant, they could cut Saber 
They could wound Saber even if they grab something like a paper cutter. So what you're saying is that Saber's armor isn't invulnerable when she's dealing with another servant. Yep. But Saber is skilled at close combat, so there's no way she'd be wounded in hand-to-hand -hand combat. The only other method would be to attack her from long distance. Attack her form a long distance. Like a ma like a magecraft projectile. But Saber has, despite being a knight, remarkable magic resistance, and she so she can deflect most magecraft. Curses, the epitome of bad luck can't touch her. While more direct intervention like firing magical energy at her like arrows also won't work. If someone wants to defeat Saber, they'll have to fight her head on and beat her that way. Saber listens silently to Tosaka's explanation. Saber never interrupts her, probably because everything Tosaka's saying is true. What the hell? That's like cheating, damn! Someone would try to go against Saber with Magecraft because they can't beat her in single combat. But if Magecraft itself is useless against her, what can they do? Sounds unfair. That may be true, but it doesn't mean Saber is unbeatable in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Berserker is much stronger than Saber, and even Lancer has a spear which could be fatal. And we were just talking about Ryder having a noble phantasm that could beat Saber. So we're not saying Saber is perfect. Oh, she's pit! Oh, I barely even noticed that she's pit! She's like, the fuck? The fuck did you just say about me? Who ain't perfect? <laughs> That's funny. Even we, even we have ways to defeat Saber. We just need to use magecraft that exceeds Saber's magic resistance, or borrow a weapon wielded by a servant to cut her head off while she's sleeping. Servants' weapons are spiritual too, so they they should be able to hurt her. Huh? It's an alarming example, but I get it. Wait, but hold on, Tosaka. We probably shouldn't be talking about things like this in front of Saber. Oh, shit. <laughs> Is she pouting? <laughs> She's like... Why y'all talking like this? Y'all ain't gonna kill me. <laughs> She's like, she about to cry. <laughs> she feels betrayed. <laughs> I, I see. So it's not that Ryder's noble phantasm was exceptional. Saber just went on the defensive because it was a servant that was attacking. You got it wrong. If Saber was focusing on defending, Ryder wouldn't be able to finish her off alone. If Ryder isn't a particularly exceptional hero, heroic spirit, it wouldn't amount to much. But with the noble phantasm in the mix, do you agree, Saber? You think Ryder's Noble Phantasm is unrelated to her abilities, right? Most likely, yes. I believe it was an autonomous weapon that does not rely on Ryder's skill, and that it has an, an effect on the Noble Phantasm itself. It is either Magecraft or Phantasmal. Whatever it is, the intensity from the Magic Circle was overwhelming. I do not think many servants could survive a direct strike. Really? By how much quantifiably? If I were to describe it in your terms, I would rank it as perhaps A+. This is a matter of opinion though as I am not certain. A+, that's one step below true magic! Whoa, I can't believe it didn't just blow up the entire school. It must not be purely destructive noble phantasm. It may have originally served a different purpose. Maybe, but this is a problem. According to Saber, it's beyond an A rank. In terms of raw power, that attack might be one of the strongest out of all the servants. Hmm. Yes, it did seem like it was a noble phantasm that excels in both offense and defense. However, my noble phantasm is more. <laughs> Saber's face is indecipherable. She's like, man, my shit better though. <laughs> she like, I mean, it's shit cool. My shit better though. <laughs> My shit better. Huh? I don't know what just happened. Saber doesn't look amused. Saber, did Tosaka say something? Tosaka's. Shut the fuck up with this nasty ass grammar. Saber, did Tosaka say something that worries you? Uh, oh, no, it is nothing. 
but I do believe it is inappropriate for a knight to ask another for their opinion of who is stronger. Huh? She's acting strange. <laughs> Saber seems embarrassed by her own actions and it starts to mutter under her breath. Very okay, whatever. By the way, I thought I heard you say something weird. Something about Saber and Lancer being anti-personnel or something. Do you mean an anti-personnel noble phantasm? Well, it is what the word suggests. My invisible air and Lancer's gay bug are armaments that are strictly used to defeat people. No matter how powerful the magical energy or curse it may possess, it cannot be used against something else. Well, I guess that makes sense. Saber's invisible sword is definitely useful in battle, but that's only effective against people. If you chopped firewood with Saber's sword, whether you can see the braid or blade or not, it's not going to affect how quickly you can chop wood. It's the same with Lancer's gay bull. Even a cursed spear that always strikes the hardest is a sharp spear if you use it against a boulder or a house. I see. So that's why it's called an anti-personnel noble phantasm. Which means Rider noble phantasm is... It would be an anti-army noble phantasm. Actually, I heard from father about this once. Certain noble phantasms are designated anti-personnel and others anti-army. The simple way to understand this is anti-personnel noble phantasm is like a gun with unlimited ammo. But an anti-army noble phantasm is like a missile you can only launch once. Rider's noble phantasm may be powerful, but it probably has limited uses. At the very least, it doesn't, con it doesn't generate a continuous effect like Saber's sword being invisible. What? Hold on a minute. A gun versus a missile? There's no contest! Sure, Saber's invisible sword is awesome. But if she goes against a ridiculous noble phantasm like that, she'll be dead before she can even swing her sword. So you're saying that if we're going to fight Ryder, we need to defeat her before she deploys her noble phantasm. Most likely. You've got no chance of it if it becomes a battle of noble phantasms. If you're going to find Ryder and Shinji, you should at least keep that in mind. The biggest requirement is for you to defeat Ryder before she deploys her noble phantasm. The longer you draw out the fight, the more of a disadvantage you'll be at. Or you can defeat Ryder's master while I battle Ryder. He is not able to fight, so that might be the better plan. So that is what we've come up with. Since we have no strategy to deal with Ryder's noble phantasm, we just need to defeat Ryder- Oh, fuck you! That wasn't Saber talking. I thought that was Saber, I'm sorry. Since we have no strategy to deal with Ryder's noble phantasm, we just need to defeat Ryder before she uses it. Whenever a noble phantasm other servants have, we still don't want to have to deal with riders. Thanks for the warning, Tosaka. We're gonna go find Shinji, but what do you want to do, Tosaka? Will you stay and watch the house? Well, if you insist, we would have come with you to look for Shinji, but I'll pass. Ryder isn't the only enemy. We can't forget that we teamed up initially to beat Berserker. So while you're out pursuing Shinji, I have something else to do. Tosaka stands up with a frosty smile. See you. I look forward to hearing some good news. We need to make friends. Fuck you. I'm sorry, that was so unnecessary. Saber and I head out together, leaving Tosaka at home. It's 7.30 in the morning. The hilly road is extremely, is extremely quiet. The road is usually packed with students going to school, but there, aren't really that, aren't, but there aren't that many people around today. I heard that the school will be closed for a while. There may not have been any deaths, but a majority of students are still bed bound. Their symptoms are like severe malnutrition, so it should be a few days before they're up and around. But those are the lucky ones. There are still some whose injuries will last a lifetime. I hear Taiga was among those sent to the hospital. Do you need to go visit her, Shiro? Yeah. I heard Fujine is just fatigued. I was told not to worry about her and just study at home. Before we left, I phoned the Fuji Fujimura house and asked how Fujine was doing. I want to go visit, but I need to hold off for now. So you are going to concentrate on investigating? That is fine, but do you have any leads? 
I can sense the presence of servants, but only when they are nearby. Unless you have a lead of some kind, it'll be difficult to locate them. Yeah. It'd be hard if Shinji was just sitting around doing nothing. But I know him, and I don't see him just keeping quiet after what happened yesterday. Shinji's not the type to just sit back and take a beating. So you believe Ryder's master plans to create another bounded field? No doubt about it. He's like me. He can't provide his servant with magical energy. If Shinji wants to get revenge on me, he'll need a lot of magical energy. Which means it might not be so hard to find him. So rather than looking for Ryder's master, we're going to look for a bounded field. Yes. We may not be able to detect Ryder's ma We may not be able to detect the master, but we should be able to detect a bounded field of that scale. We'll be able to pinpoint the site too. We just need to find a big building that draws in a large crowd. This is a surprise. That is brilliant, Shira. I do have a brain, you know. If I wasn't confident about finding them, I wouldn't be saying this. Yeah, I'm confident. The bounded field is one thing, but there's a point to us walking around like this too. Shinji probably can't leave me alone any more than I can leave him alone. I had to Shinji's house just in case. I have Sh Saber check, the right, check for Ryder's presence. She finds nothing. Well, Shinji not the sort that just roll over and hide in his house after what's happened. Let's go. If Shinji's gonna create a bounded field, it wouldn't be here. It'll be in Shinto. Let's check all the office buildings there. I call Saber over and turn to leave the motto house. Shiro, this is Sakura's house, is it not? Since you are here, do you at least not do you not at least intend to say hello? I believe we have enough time for that. I am worried about Sakura. According to Dosaka, Sakura was just weakened. Luckily wasn't injured beyond that. If it were up to me, I'd like to see her and take care of her the way she's always taking care of me. But I won't do it. As long as the world's going, I shouldn't see her. I don't want her to get involved in any of this. Besides, I can't possibly face Sakura when I'm about to head out and fight her brother. Should the worst happen and I actually kill Shinji, I'll never be able to face her again. I shouldn't leave any loose ends like that. It's best for me, and I'm sure it's best for Sakura too. We check every building we find. Of course we start with the big ones, but so far, nothing. I wipe the sweat from my brow and force my leaden limbs to keep moving. Imagine fucking, um, what's her name? Ilya pulls up and is like, oh, you looking for somebody? I'll help you. And it's, <laughs> that would be hard. That would make this so much easier. Ilya, please pull up and just make my life easy. I try to calm my labored breathing by just taking a moment to rest. Oh, Shiro, is something the matter? Shiro, this way. Oh, hold it, this is a park. There are still bundles we haven't looked. Please, let that matter wait for a moment. This is more important. Something must have caught her attention. Debra's tone is stern and she pulls me towards the park. Hey, Saber, what's going on? Why are we here? There's nothing here. Even you know that. Please, just sit on this bench. I will hear what you have to say once you have done so. Saber is intense about this, so I reluctantly sit down, and then... For a moment, I almost feel faint. Uh-huh. I hold my head with one hand. My forehead is damp with sweat, and my breathing is labored even though I'm sitting down. Hey, wait a minute. Why would I be sweating like this in the dead of winter? This is weird. I don't know why I'm so exhausted. As soon as I say this, I realize what's going on. I'm not exhausted. My wounds haven't completely healed, so they're tingling. This is unreal. No matter how much I try, I can't get my breathing under control. Nigga, stand up! My body feels heavy and my legs refuse to take my weight. Saber, stand him up! I see you have finally realized your condition, Shiro. Saber is mad. I don't blame her. I was one who suggested searching for Shinji, but here I am sitting on a bench. Sorry, I'll get up soon. Just give me a moment. That is not what I'm trying to point out. Nothing seems to get through to you. 
Huh? I can see that Saber's mad. What I don't understand is why. Hey, Saber, you need to be clear with me, or else I won't know what you're trying to get at. If you do not know, there is no point in telling you. Please, just sit here, Shiro. If you will not rest on your own, then I shall join you. Saber sits right next to me. Huh? The bench is not that big. Saber sitting close enough to me that our shoulders might touch if one of us leans over even a little. Hey, wait, Saber. We don't have time to rest. We didn't come here to play around. We are indeed not here to simply loiter. Even in battle, you must rest. If you have a grievance, I suggest you air it before you've caught your breath. I suggest you air it after you've caught your breath. Well, well, you tell me to catch my breath, but... Sure, I'm totally worn out and I can barely breathe. But having her so close to me makes my heart go absolutely crazy. Shiro, are you listening to me? You have been pushing yourself this whole time. What you must do now is try to loosen up and calm down. You cannot rest properly if you continue on, distracted as you are. Yeah, but if she wants me to be calm, it'd really help if she kept her distance. I don't know how Saber feels, but I can't help but see her as a girl around my own age. Well, she may actually be younger, but she's still a girl. And plus, she's beyond beautiful. Real shit. No guy can stay calm this close to her, and I'm certainly no exception. Shiro, is it my imagination or are you even paler than before? No, no, I'm not flustered or anything. If you say so, but perhaps you should lie down. Is there a place to lie down around here? Saber looks around. Oh, what the... What are the odds of there being some random dude lying across a bench using his girlfriend's lap as a pillow in a park that's usually deserted? And... Saber glances at the pair of lovebirds. She's obviously thinking. Shiro, if you do not feel well, then you should lie. I'm fine. I just need to sit for a second and I'll get better. Don't you worry about me. Nope, no worrying about me. Just leave me alone. Shiro, you're folding. Shiro, you're dropping the bag. See, now, if I was Shiro, I would not pass up a chance to rest my head or her fucking dies. I would not pass up that opportunity. Shiro, for one second, be a real nigga and take the chance. Do it. Take the opportunity. I turn away from Saber and close my eyes. Anything to keep our eyes from locking. Bitch made. Thinking, think calming thoughts, Shiro. Now I just have to keep taking deep breaths, deep breaths, and try not to think about Saber being right next to me. In the media. <laughs> it took a night for the fire to die down. The searing roaring red wall eventually disappeared. All that remained was a charred field, strewn with smoldering blackened lumber. I remember that, while I lay there on the ground, the sound of it reminded me of sparklers. The ground was getting, the sky was getting cloudy. It should rain soon, that will help put out the fires. I could hardly even breathe as I lay there, staring dazedly at the sky. Charred remains hemmed me in on all sides. Burns cover almost my entire body, and there's an especially painful sensation around my chest. My chest is gouged out. I could probably touch my own insides. Oh yeah, I've forgotten about that. I didn't collapse because I got tired. It's not that my numb body was trying to do me a favor by letting me rest. I collapsed because I was much too hurt to keep moving at all. That's why I ended up just accepting it, calmly, no panic. I knew I wasn't going to make it. Everyone else was already dead anyway, so I wasn't scared. Staring up at the cloudy sky, I felt myself just sort of fading away. Yet, in the haze of fading consciousness, I decided that as long as I was alive, I'd try calling for help right until the end. Huh? Wait, something's off. I shouldn't be remembering this pain in my chest. I jerk myself upright and tug my shirt to check myself over. Yeah, I figured as much. There's no wound. There's no scar on my chest. Yeah, the scar was on his shoulder, not his chest. 
that was um that's sh that's that's shaky. The respiratory distress, the burn caused did almost kill me, but it didn't take some massive chest wound. Something like that had happened. Even Kiritsuka wouldn't have been able to help me. But more importantly, whoa, it's already night. Did I fall asleep, Saber? Yes, you slept deeply, so I did not wish to wake you. It seems to have helped, though. You have regained some of your color. Not very nice. Sure, it might have been my fault for passing out, but you could have woken me up. I told you you wouldn't have time to rest. Shut your bitch ass up. You must rest. And you did so only for about an hour, so it should not be a problem. He left out in the morning, didn't he? What do you mean he only rested for an hour? How long were y'all walking around? That's just the benefit of hindsight. What would you have done if I hadn't woken up? Well, I do not believe our situation would have changed much, actually. I had been about, I had been about to wake you since the sun is setting and it is growing cold. I do admit, I feel a lot better. And as we say this, <laughs> Ilya, berserker tagging along, pulls out of the woodworks and beats the shit out of me. <laughs> I get up from the bench and start walking through the field. There's no trace of what this field once looked like. No trace of what it, no trace of when it used to be a residential district, nor any trace of when it was cast in a hellish red light. But for some reason, I'm irritated that I dreamed that scene just because I slept here. Shiro, Shiro is something wrong? No, I was just thinking that if I was going to rest, it should have been somewhere else. Too many bad memories here. Bad memories. Do you have some link to this place? Huh? Oh, right, I never told you. I used to live around here a long time ago. Ten years ago, actually. There was a giant fire. It burned down my house with my parents inside. That's when my old man saved me. Later, he adopted me. What? So that means you. Yeah, I'm not Kiritsugu's biological son, and I guess I am not. I guess I am not without ties to the Holy Grail War either. I heard that this place was the final battleground during the last war. It's kind of ironic to think that a survivor of this site turned out to be a master. I walk through the field. It's been ten years, but it still seems like the ground hasn't recovered enough for even grass to grow. Maybe all the resentment of the people who died here seeped into the land itself. Shiro, is that why you are so adamant about not allowing innocents to be harmed? As a victim of the Holy Grail War yourself, you are hoping to avoid creating any such other victims. Huh? Um, well... Now that she mentions it, I guess I can see people coming to that conclusion. Surprisingly, I've never thought about it like that. I'm not sure. You have a good point, but I think it's something simpler than that. Ten years ago, I was so happy when Kiritsugu saved me. I didn't feel anything else at the time, and I think I just aspired to be like him one day, too. Yeah, I was just happy. Words can't even begin to describe what I felt when I called out for help and actually got it. But at the same time, the happier I was, the more guilty I felt. It didn't feel right, though, knowing that my wish was the only one to be granted. My old man saved me, but no one else was saved, and they couldn't do anything about it. Everyone wished for salvation, but only my wish was granted. Only I was saved. And in exchange, everyone else died. And that's why I have to take responsibility. But I can't take back something that's already happened. If I want to do something for the people who died, I, I should focus on preventing what's to come. I will not allow another catastrophe like the one 10 years ago. If something like that ever happened again, I'd never be able to face the people who got sacrificed that time. At least that's how I see it. More importantly, we need to get back to looking for Shinji. I feel better now, and we need to hurry up and check the builders we haven't gotten to yet. Besides, there should be fewer people around at night. If Shinji wants to attack us, this will be the time. So if our plan is to, bait, is to be bait to lower him out, it's time to get to it. Let's go, Saber. Let's get back to the office district. Saber. What's wrong? Did you forget something? 
No, I was just recalling what happened this morning. Hey, if you know, you know. If you know, you know. I'll, I'll, hey, I watched. I watched the show. So I know. So if you know, you know. If you don't know, I ain't gonna say nothing. I suggested you focus on healing your wounds before going out looking for Ryder's master. But you told me our priorities were mixed up. Hmm. You mentioned the same thing yesterday. I have believed this for some time, but now I am certain. You do not value your own life. It's like... She just stares at me and lays it out like it's a sin or something. You put others ahead of yourself. Admirable though it may be, you will one day regret doing so. You should value yourself more, Shiro. Saber cuts past me. Let us go. Being here is clearly not good for you. Saber heads towards the office district. I try to call out to her, but I can't stop her. What are you saying? That's what I want to. That's what I want to ask her. But the worst just won't come. There's no way I'm not trying to help myself. That can't be true. There's no way I'm not trying to help myself. That can't be true. But I somehow can't think of a single thing to say to argue with him. We make our way through the town after dark. It's a little past eight. The station is at its most crowded hour and Saber and I stare at the map of the town. We have checked most of the main buildings around this area. Is there anywhere else we can go? Let's see. There's a factory a little out. Uh, there's a factory a little further out from here. We should probably go check it out since people gather there. Not that factories are exactly Shinji's style. We do make conversation now, but it's still hard for me to look Saber in the eye. I think our conversation from earlier is still stuck in my head. Saber's acting like it didn't happen, which bothers me even more. What about you, Saber? Can you sense Ryder's presence? Dumbass question. No, I cannot. I fought her once, so I should be able to sense her. Dumbass question. If she sensed Ryder's presence, she'd tell you. An odd feeling prickles my skin. Even I can feel the wave of magical energy that washes over us. There's no way that Saber can't. Sure, I do not believe I need to tell you, but... I know. Are they close, Saber? No, they are not close enough. But we are most definitely being watched. This wave of magical energy is likely an attempt to provoke us. We're being watched, that means they've fallen into our trap. Releasing so much magical energy is an obvious attempt to lure us out. So, is this Ryder? My mind changes gears. The awkwardness between Saber and me earlier disappears. I will track the source of magical energy. Please, be careful, Master. I nod. The wave of bloodlust I feel stinking at my skin is coming from the direction of the office district as it slowly empties of people. Today of all days, maybe there will be nobody working overtime. Most of the lights in the windows of the building seem to be the heart of Shinto are seen as the heart of Shinto are dark. There aren't many people on the sidewalk, so we have a plenty a pretty clear view of the building. I don't see anyone suspicious. If Shinji's anywhere, he'll be up ahead, maybe in the park which is left. I feel the bloodlust growing more intense. The enemy's nearby, or more like. A chill runs up my spine. Even I can feel this aura of bloodlust. And we're probably already in enemy territory. Saber, be careful. Something's not right. You are correct. I do not believe they would attack us with so many others present. But it is difficult to be certain with this foe. It is best to be cautious. We both nod in silent agreement and make our way toward the park. It's probably best to ignore the oppressive sense of oppressive sense of a knife being pressed on my throat. Shinji and Ryder are nowhere around the office district. If they're going to attack, it's probably somewhere in the park where there won't be any anyone else around. Are you sure about that? 
I don't think they. I don't think they have an issue just killing niggas in front of niggas. Shiro. I turn towards Saber. She rushes towards me like a bolt of lightning and blocks a blow aimed straight out of my head. I look up, a massive building towers overhead. Clinging to the side of that building is kind of like a spider. It's Ryder. She tried to assassinate us. Her hair is long enough to cover her entire body. Her limbs supple and white. The masked woman is indeed our enemy Ryder. She licks her lips as she stares down at me. What you trying to get into? We can stop talking and we can start fucking up. I was supposed to be more suggestive and not more aggressive. I apologize. The hairs on the back of my head stand on end. There's no mistaking it. She came spiraling down from the top of the building, aiming to take my head in a sneak attack from my blind spot. Saber lands on the ground. In the time it took for her to rush in to block Ryder's attack, Saber summoned her armor. Saber, she's... I will go after her. Please, stay here, Shiro. Go after her? How? Saber kicks off the ground. She disappears into the sky with a glint of silvery armor. Ryder clinging to the side of the building like that is absurd enough. But Saber leaping skyward in pursuit of her is outright ridiculous. No, they're servants. Normal lousy doesn't apply here. Like Ryder... Saber moves along the side of the building, striking at it with dizzying speed. I can't watch, I can't wait to watch the anime of this, real shit. I can't wait to watch this anime. <laughs> this shit is crazy. The two shadows clash and cross against each other. The sight of the two of them fighting overhead, darting along the building as they climb into the air, it's like watching two fighter jets. All the while I... Fuck. Fuck, fuck. Wait, I don't need to. Let's see what the flowchart says. Okay. I said the smart thing to do would be to wait here. You can follow Saber, but she won't be much help. Saber can handle this herself, you know? Waiting here... It's kind of like... I feel like if we wait here, Shinji might appear. And we'll be safe from Ryder. But at the same time, I feel like if we follow Saber, we will run into Shinji. I'm gonna do the stupid thing. I'm gonna follow Saber. I can't just watch and do nothing. The uneven footing prevents Saber from gaining ground on Ryder. The two clash in the air, rushing up to the rooftop. Oh, the rooftop! If Ryder came flying down from the top of the building, chances are Shinji's there. We have two possible ways to win our fight against Ryder. Either we defeat her directly or we defeat her master. But whichever it is, it has to be before she deploys her noble phantasm. While Saber's fighting Ryder, the only thing I should be, there's only one thing I should be doing. Going after Shinji. All right, so my theory was correct. Even though this might still be a wrong game. A fucking interlude, all right. So we're playing a Saber now. We're watching a saber fight. Oh, that's hard! The two shadows climb upwards. They continue to distance themselves from the ground, getting more and more altitude. Neither of them needs proper footing. They just kick their way up along the wall. As it happens, they clash countless times, all before they ever reach the top. For anyone watching from the ground, they'd probably think they were seeing a game of pinball. Though I doubt they'd be able to follow the two with a naked eye. It's like a deadly circus act. The collisions are barely discernible, invisible to normal human beings. Saber had no desire to be part of this crazy circus act. She may be a servant, but she can't fly through the sky. She might be able to run along the building's wall, but that's it. This is no better than a free fall for her. She alternates between kicking off the building before she loses momentum and slowing and slowing to let gravity take hold of her it may be no exaggeration to say she's falling into the sky now that she started she'll continue all the way up to the rooftop and in that entire journey if her opponent hits her she'll be hurled to the ground but it seems the law of gravity do not appear to ap apply to the enemy 
to the opponent Saber had to defeat. The streak of purple shoots across the side of the building in pursuit of Saber while Saber focuses on reaching the roof. Gravity has no hold on Saber. She leaps around effortlessly, moving in all from all moving in and from all directions. Up, up, down, down, left, right. To strike at Saber. Her long hair trails out behind her like a comet tail. And she looks like a snake wrapping itself around a log. Saber's feet touches the wall. She leans in sideways and kicks the wall, leaving for the edge of the building. Saber suddenly shoots out at the right at a right angle to, to her previous trajectory. Not one of the attacks find its mark. Ryder is simply no match for Saber's raw power. Saber shakes Ryder off with a single kick, then kicks upward once again when she reaches the building's side. She aims herself upward. If Ryder is like a serpent coiling around the building, Saber is like a bursting spark. But it looks like Ryder might have predicted her moves. The distance between the two remains the same. Ryder continues along the side of the building, not letting Saber open any distance between them. She strikes every time Saber has to take a step. Saber fends off Ryder with her blade and jumps to put some space between them. Though she's able to fend off Ryder's coiling pursuit, there's only so much she can do in the air. Where before there had been no contest in their combat ability, they are now more evenly matched. Neither has an attack that can bring this to a close. No, Ryder is withholding her own deadliest attack. Every time Saber leaps at Ryder, Ryder fends off her attack but never counterattacks. Ryder is only keeping Saber at bay as she makes her way up to the rooftop. Do you not intend to fight, Ryder? Saber curses at her cowardly enemy. To a knight like Saber, a fight like this is as good as an insult. Such a thing should involve both opponents giving their all in a clash. By that belief, Ryder's actions are disrespectful. It appears you do not like height, Saber. Ryder's voice is cool. She's right. Saber is clearly not used to fighting in the air. This is probably a first for her, actually. Knights are meant to fight on solid ground. They are not meant to cling to walls like they're like her opponent. Your proud sword won't do you any good here, but do not worry. I will give you your rest soon. Ryder moves upwards, her manner inviting. She set this whole thing up. Saber understands that, though. At the end of the circus, yes. Ryder's ideal positioning must be waiting above. Ryder can't use her trump card so readily, which is why she's luring her prey to a place where there will be no interruption, so they can settle this with her ultimate attack. As soon as she reaches the roof, she'll be in a difficult position. If Ryder's noble phantasm is exactly what Saber thinks it is, she won't have any defense against it. But there is no turning back now. We just can't ignore Ryder or her master. This isn't about defeating an enemy in the Holy Grail War. Saber must defeat Ryder here and now to protect her master. Because she has no other choice. This whole situation must be absolutely dumbfounding for her. She's probably thought more than once about not wanting to push her master to do anything crazy. The two continue gaining altitude. Their rapid clashes ring out across the building as the battle approaches its final destination. <laughs> Damn, why does it only go up to the 40th floor? I rush up the stairs while I complain. I managed to enter the building from the back, but the elevator doesn't go all the way up to the roof. I have to run up the remaining 10 flights of stairs. That is terrible! I climb up the stairs as fast as I can. I'm not sure how long it's been since Saber and I split up. Probably less than 10 minutes, but that's too long. You never know how or when a battle will end. Even Saber's not perfect. She can make a mistake and get into trouble. So before that happens, if I can make... If I can make Shinji use up his command spells, Ryder might stop fighting. The harder I run, the more my still healing body aches. Sprinting towards the building, then up the stairs, has left me out of breath. 
but I don't slow down. No, I speed the fuck up. Something about this has me worried. I'm not sure why, but my chest hurts. It's not a physical pain. Something is warning me of danger ahead. Saber can't win. There's something on this rooftop that shouldn't be faced. I try to shake this feeling off and focus on climbing the stairs. The wind is strong. The moment I open the door, the city's nightscape fills my field of vision. Scorch marks pock the concrete, and at its center, at the heart of the burn scarred rooftop, Saber is on her knees. Why are you here? Saber's shoulders heave with her labored breathing. The moment I rush to her, I notice something strange floating up above me. Or rather, the sheer overwhelming amount of magical energy forces me to take notice. I look up towards the sky. Flapping wings. I hear flapping wings. Something, a paler and more blinding white than the light of the moon, hovers over me. Is this bitch riding Pegasus?! It is a legendary mystic I've only heard about in myth. This is some bullshit. This bitch is. I guess she's riding for a reason. The moment she reaches the rooftop, Saber confronts her enemy's true form. Saber leans on her sword exhausted and looks up. The white light rushes towards her. Saber unleashes a wind that shrouds her sword, using it to create an invisible barrier. She goes flying backward. Her attempt to block the ongoing Pegasus, it is Pegasus, fails to even slow it down. The force of the impact knocks Saber back, slamming her brutally into the ground. There's no time to be lying down. Pegasus turns mid-air and resumes its glide without so much as pausing. She can't possibly brace herself. Her only option is to try to evade. Even if she manages that, the after effects of his passes will chip away at her defenses. If this keeps up, it will hit her eventually. The white light streaks down towards her. Pegasus sails far over, far overhead and knocks Saber backwards before sweeping back into the skies. Saber can't possibly reach it. There are no walls she can kick off of, not up here. Even if she could, there's no way she could actually reach Pegasus. Despite her disadvantage, Saber waits for an opportunity to attack. Fight back. Pegasus it may be, but it is a living creature, so she should be able to kill it if she can just get a chance. Her only opportunity for victory is if Ryder makes a mistake at the range. This is a surprise. You were tougher than I expected. Ryder's voice comes from high above. Saber grips her sword tightly as she looks up. But is there any point in this? You have no chance of winning. If you were to disappear, I suggest you at least do it gracefully. Ryder's voice is calm. Even so, I hear just the slightest bit of joy in it. I expected you to have a noble... F I suspected you to have a phantasmal species. But I didn't expect you to have this, Ryder. A phantasmal species. As the name suggests, it refers to a creature which exists within an illusion. Humanoids like fairies and giants, demonic creatures like Oni and dragons. They're considered mystics. That alone makes them superior to magecraft. It's the law of nature for mystics to be destroyed by other, stronger mystics. In the same way, magecraft grows in power with knowledge. Phantasmal species accumulate power from their longevity. Even if a human mast even if a human masters magecraft, the most they can accumulate is about 500 years worth of it. Take a species that's lived since ancient times. 
There's just no contest between that and a mystic that's only a 500 years old. But it's been a long, long time since humans and phantasmals existed in the same world. The longer the phantasmal has lived, the further it's distanced itself from the world. The only phantasmal species in the modern world are a scant few hundred years old. So Saber expected the phantasmal rider had suspected the phantasmal rider has as her mount to be only a few hundred years old. You must be truly wicked if you thought to bring something from the age of gods here, Ryder. Yes, I am different from you all. That is, I was merely an enemy for you. And so now I will control only the poor things you people cast out into the distant past. I see. I knew there was something twisted about you. So you are a demonic spirit rather than a heroic spirit. Curse me all you want. It doesn't matter. You won't be able to lay so much a finger on my darling here. The Pegasus rests his wings in the air. It's a giant arrow aimed at Saber's heart, ready to fire at a moment's notice. She glares at the creature and thinks. Pegasus itself is not a powerful phantasmal species. A typical Pegasus is just a phantasmal that can only match a demonic beast in power. Were that the case, it would be easy to defeat with Saber's invisible air alone, but it isn't that. But it isn't the case. That Pegasus has existed since the Age of Gods, and has long since reached the level of a phantasmal. The horse is nearing the level of the dragon race, considered to be the strongest of all phantasmals. At the very least, its defenses are probably already the level of a dragon race, since Pegasus possesses divine protection that exceeds even Saber's, whose magic resistance is unparalleled. The way it glides through the air, trailing massive amounts of magical energy, is like a castle wall bearing down on Saber. It can't possibly, it can't be possible to avoid or repel something like that. But something else is odd here. Ryder simply summoned Pegasus, and it has no true name of its own. To Ryder, Pegasus is little more than, say, a favorite dagger. And that means she has yet to use her noble phantasm. Even in a dire predicament, the possibility of defeat never enters Saber's mind. Instead, she thinks her chance will come when Ryder starts to get really serious. Whatever, whatever Ryder's noble phantasm may be, it'll have, no pro it'll have no trouble destroying a building like this. She just needs to focus on defending herself and staying alive. Then all she'll have to do is cut Ryder down as soon as the opportunity presents itself. Yes, if only her master hadn't shown up. Now I feel like a dumbass. What? I look up towards the sky. Now I feel like a dumbass. Flapping wings, I hear flapping wings. Something a, a paler and more blinding white than the light of the moon hovers over me. It is a legendary mystic I've only heard about in myth. Uh, uh, Pegasus, the identity of Ryder's noble phantasm. Could that be what scorched the rooftop and forced Saber and Honor to her knees? I see that Ryder, as her class name suggests, riding a horse, tearing across the sky. What the? I shift my focus from Ryder. I thought I heard something. Shinji! I know you're here! Come on out! I can't tell how strong Ryder is while she's on Pegasus. All I can tell is that is that White Fiend has more magical energy in it than a few hundred mages could ever muster. And one of the roof is a charred mess. That monster can destroy damn near anything around it just by running across it. That thing from up the sky. If that thing charges from up the sky, even Saber won't be able to avoid it. Quit hiding! I came here like you asked, so show yourself! It's a race against time. I need to defeat Shinji. If I defeat the master, Ryder will disappear. <laughs> I hear laughter. Shinji must be hiding somewhere. Did you see that, Emiya? This is the difference between my power and yours. Only his voice echoes. I fight down my impatience and try to focus on the sound of his laughter. Damn, the wind is so strong. I can't tell where the laughter's coming from. 
Sucks for you. But this is what you get when you try to be all cool and act like it's all under control, dumbass. Now do you understand that you have to go for the kill when you have the chance? Don't rush. Let him talk. Let him talk all he wants. The more he talks, the better chance I have of finding him. But I'm not like that. You and your servant are done for. Here and now. But it's not like we're total strangers, you know? I still owe you one from yesterday, so I'll be merciful and kill you quickly. This is bad. Pegasus, still high up in the sky, tips its head towards Saber. The vortex of magical energy whirls faster as if it knows no limit. If that things come at us at full speed, it'll blow the entire roof apart. Don't worry, Emiya. You were a bit of a speed bump along the way. But I'll make sure those morons at school join you soon. And if you're still lonely after that, I'll send Sakura to join you too. Why you? Shinji! Go, Ryder! Take the woman first! Don't leave a trace! The white, a white comet streaks towards us, and at that moment, a storm rages around me. What? For the first time, she forgets her enemy in battle. She is furious with her master for walking into this death trap, but she's also angry with herself for failing to anticipate him doing so. All those thoughts are cast aside now. What else can she do? Even now, even in the midst of danger, she can only see concern for her well-being in his eyes. He's always been like this, actually. He may have understood that she was an exceptional knight, but that's never how he saw her. It appears playtime is over, Saber. Ryder's giggling voice reaches her even now. Ryder touches Pegasus' neck with both her hands, and the beast's wings beat harder. My noble phantasm is powerful, but it is not suitable to be used on the ground. If I use it, it will draw attention. With other masters around, I cannot do so, so I cannot do so readily. But up here, there is no cause for worry. Did you understand that I brought you up here because it suited me? Something begins to form in Ryder's hands. It seems insignificant, really, a glittering golden rope. Is that your noble phantasm rider? Yes, distasteful though it is. My darling here is too kind, not fit for battle, and so I need to do something like this to get them in the mood. Pegasus lowers his head. This feral nature is not inborn within the creature itself, but coaxed from it by Ryder's touch. Be gone, Saber. Even if you survive, your master has no chance. So long as your master dies, you will follow him, no? It is the inarguable truth. Ryder's no phantasm will utterly destroy the roof. If she hurried, she might even be she might be able to carry Shiro away and escape. But Ryder won't stop as she's destroying the rooftop. Her master's not strong enough to survive a collapsing building. Meaning to protect her master. She will have to destroy her enemy. Pegasus and all. She doesn't have time to think about whether this is the right thing to do. Saber glances one final time at her master, still some distance from her. He's doing his best. He's doing his best to fill his role simply by gritting his teeth and holding back. A wind. The last of her hesitation fades. What is ahead no longer matters. All that matters is this moment and in it. She must be her master's blade and defeat the enemy they now face. Go, Ryder! Get that woman first! Don't leave any trace of her! I hear the jarring, grated shout. In that moment, Pegasus ascends higher and vanishes from sight. Pegasus flies up into the air. It's already lost its form. It rises up as if to shoot through the moon and then continues its arc by flapping its wings powering itself down toward the ground. The blazing white comet streaks downward. It becomes an arrow of searing white light, but Ryder continues urging it on. There's only one target. It intends to annihilate its enemy entirely, and the isolated garden in the sky along with it. Alero, she speaks his name. If a noble phantasm is a miracle that is released by speaking its true name.
It is a divine lightning. A thunderous flash. There's no emotion in her eyes as she looks on. You said nobody would see from this vantage, didn't you, Ryder? A wind unfurls from her blade and becomes a storm. I agree. There's no need to worry about destroying the ground from so high up. The seal is broken. Layers of wind unfold from her blade. Her sword is finally visible. A storm rages before my eyes. The white light descends upon the rooftop. Saber though, as she's a sole focus of that light, doesn't move. The raging wind, she's the source. No, not Saber herself, but her sword. Huh? I can't believe what I'm seeing. The blade should be invisible, but there it is. Like unwrapping bandages, the wind slowly coil coils away from her blade. This bitch got Excalibur? A golden sword? The wind rages on. The multiple layers of seals peel away. The bands of wind dissolve into the air. She readies her now visible sword and turns back towards Pegasus as if it di as it dives towards her. Ryder approaches as a brilliant flare of light. Bellafron is now large enough to engulf the entire rooftop and is only picking up speed to destroy us, building and all. The brittle of shield of chivalry lights up the rooftop. Time stops. In the face of inescapable destruction, my mind goes blank. But the light is not coming from the brittle of chivalry. The light churns and builds upon itself. The light of Ryder's mount is brilliant, but it can't hold a candle to the purity I see in this one. Ryder is holding the ultimate sacred store sword that has collected the lights of the stars. I would- Whoa! Hold on! I know my history! Cause that was a guess. A single line of brilliant light. It's a blade of light, shearing through everything it touches. A beam of light destroys Ryder utterly as it cleaves through the clouds and disappears into the night sky. Most likely, if that sword had been used on the ground, it would have carved a trail of devastation through the city. Her sword is not unseeable. It simply does not reveal itself. It is a golden sword that captivates all who behold it with a true name of surpassing fame. Excalibur, the sword of promised victory. A sword that is said to have existed in England. A sword wielded by the king, who has become the very symbol of knighthood. The strongest of the service noble phantasms, sealed by, bound, sealed by several bounded fields. That is Saber's proof of her place as a hero. So she's King Arthur, right? I'm pretty sure that's who had Excalibur, right? King Arthur. Saber falls on the, over the rooftop. The wind has died down, and not so much as a breeze whispers across the rooftop. I stand, days in place, I can't approach Saber. I'm still too confused to act. Or maybe I'm just captivated by her sword. My mind is racing, and I can't seem to think of much that makes sense. Why does she have that sword? That golden sword belongs to a famous, knightly king. Everyone knows who. As I try to figure out how she came to have something like that, I realize my mind is doing everything it can to deny the simplest of the possible answers. I don't need to be making all these assumptions. That sword has always been hers. And that's why her true name is so easy to figure out. The owner of that sacred sword which can only have one name. 
Zebra remains motionless where she stands. I should approach her, but my body won't listen. I've been told many times that her Saber is a heroic spirit, but now that I've seen for myself that she is indeed a great hero of the past, I hesitate to even get closer to her. <laughs> I hear a shriek. Something is burning in the shadows. I turn to look. I see a burning book slowly dissolving in the pile of ash and... This bitch! It's burning! My, my command spells are burning! I see Shinji cringing as he watches the book burn. Shinji! He must have realized how much trouble he's in now that Ryder's been defeated. Shinji turns and sprints towards the exit from the rooftop. Hey! He leaps through the door to the stairway. Wait, Shinji! I can't let him get away again. The moment I turn to pursue Shinji, just out of the corner of my eye, I see Saber collapse. My mind stops. Shinji is fleeing and Saber is falling to the ground. Bro, get the Saber. I can't leave Saber alone. Ryder's gone and the book that acted as Shinji's command spell is burned to ash. Shinji doesn't have a servant anymore and he's lost his command spells. The contest is as good as over. Saber is my priority now. I rush to her. She's not holding the golden sword anymore. It's disappeared. And now there's just Saber lying on the ground. Saber's in bad shape. Beads of sweat trickle down her brow and her breath is shallow, labored. She looks like she's got a fever. No way. Hey, Saber, what's going on? I call out to Saber nervously, but she doesn't respond. She's out cold. I touch her forehead. It's hot. I jerk my hand away. It's unnaturally hot. She's gotta, she's gotta be running a fever of over 40 degrees. Saber, hey, pull yourself together. I call out to her, but her only response is shallow, anguished breathing. I don't know what the hell's going on. I don't know what to do, but I can't just stand around. I'm gonna take you home. I'll deal with any complaints later. I lift Saber up. She's so light. I knew that, of course, but she now she seems even lighter. No more than that, she's... She's warm. That means she's still alive. Saber's still the person I've known all this time. I'm pissed with myself for even hesitating. Damn, what's it matter if she's a hero? No matter who Saber is, she's here and she's still warm. How much of an idiot was I putting up this wall between us before? We're going home quick. Just hold still, Saber. I start running, Saber in my arms. There's no sense of triumph from this victory. All I feel is Saber in my arms, barely breathing. It's done. I'm having her sleep in the Japanese style room. She's not waking up anytime soon though, not with the state she's in. Thanks for taking a look. I wouldn't have been able to treat Saber. Well, I just took her armor off and made her more comfortable. There's really nothing to thank me for. Saber's not improving, so I didn't do much. But, but still, I'm glad Tosaka was here. The moment I arrived home carrying Saber, Tosaka understood what was going on. It's been an hour. She tried telling Saber what she was going to do, then took her armor off. So, what happened? You went to go find Shinji, and you came home with the wounded Saber. I know something happened, care to explain? I don't know how to explain. Saber's noble phantasm. I shouldn't disclose her true name. I can't decide on my own to reveal that. Ryder's been defeated. Shinji lost his command spells and dropped out. But Saber used her noble phantasm that collapsed right after. Saber's noble phantasm. I do want details, but I can let that go for now. Probably the least of your concerns at this point. Why? What do you mean the least of my concerns? How was that unclear? You've got to, you've got to, you've got to have it fit. You've got to have figured it out by now that Saber's going to disappear. Huh? 
She says it so calmly. So Sokka just casually brings up the one thing I've been trying so hard to avoid. Disappear? You're saying Saber's going to disappear? Yes, yeah, Saber's almost out of magical energy. I don't know what sort of noble phantasm she used, but it must have burned through an incredible amount of magical energy. Saber's used up most of the magical energy she had. She's in so much agony because she's fighting so hard to remain here, even as she's on the brink of disappearing from the lack of magical energy. She's gonna disappear because she doesn't have magical energy. So you're saying that Saber's gonna disappear even though she's not hurt? Yes. Running out of magical energy is a more serious problem than a servant just getting wounded. Magical energy is how servants are able to give their spirits form. Without it, they will disappear. Typically, masters provide their servants with magical energy so that doesn't happen. But you can't do that. That means Saber can only fight with her own magical energy. Once she runs out, it's over. You were told that from the start. That is definitely what Saber said. She was fine before, and Saber said she could recover if she slept. Only because she had an extraordinary amount of magical energy to begin with. And yes, there's still some magical energy left in Saber. She can probably recover enough magical energy to maintain her body without disappearing. But that'll be about it. Saber will need to fight as she is now. She absolutely cannot use a noble phantasm again. The next time she does, she will disappear. She'll disappear if she uses her noble phantasm. I wouldn't want Saber fighting like this at all. I don't ever want to see Saber on her knees in that kind of pain again. Now do you understand? You only have two ways of getting Saber back to her normal state. Either the master replenishes their magical energy, or they have the servant collect magical energy themselves. A servant collecting it themselves. That would mean killing innocent people, like Ryder. That's impossible. Saber would never do that. She said herself she'd never do such a thing. I figured as much. If she had to, if she had to involve innocent people, I'm sure Saber would choose to let herself disappear. Then there's only one other option. If you don't want Saber to disappear, you need to provide her with magical energy. Hold on, hold on. I, I've, I've seen this before. I know this scene. This is um, in the this, this is this is when Shiro. <laughs> This is when Shiro transfers magical energy to Saber from his dick, right? <laughs> this is when Shiro transfers magical energy to Saber from his cock. <laughs> oh, that's the- besides those episodes of the anime I saw, that's the only thing of Fate State Night I've seen. The crappy- the, the crappy eight scenes. That's the only thing I've seen, the shitty eight scenes, bro. When I read that dialogue, that shit was killing me. <laughs> oh my goodness. I really wish I could. I really wish I played the... I wish they kept the scenes in here, bro. Because that would have been so funny to read through. <laughs> if I could, I would have done that a long time ago. But I don't know how to give her magical energy. I can't do everything you can. Probably not. And it's too late to teach you magecraft to share magical energy. You're really not suited to be a mage and it will probably take you a year to learn. And even if you learned it, you wouldn't even be able to use it. Well, a path should be created between you and Saber during her summoning, so there might be a different way, but... Listen, if you want to save Saber, you'll have to make her attack people and then have her eat their souls. Which I'm sure you know already. That's the most realistic method. But it's... I'm sure Saber would hate that. But if you do nothing, Saber will disappear. And you'll become a target for other masters. Saber's going to disappear. I can't even consider that. I still remember the warmth of her body when I was carrying her. Then there's only one answer. Use a command spell, Emiya. That should at least let you avoid the worst case here. What she's trying to say is... I need to order Saber to kill innocent people. I can't say anything. 
I resent what Osaka is saying, but there's a part of me that has to admit it could be one of, it could be one of our options. I'll let you decide. Saber's condition might settle down if she sleeps, but she's at her limit. Osaka leaves the living room. I can't even lift my head. All I can do is listen to the sound of her footsteps receding down the hall. This is fucked. Oh shit. I actually don't know how that's gonna turn out. Fuck. What do we do? What do we do? Dead ass, like what do we do here? Shit, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Let's see what the next one's called. Dragon Slaying. Fuck out of here. Her noble phantasm is still a C? After 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 seeing this? After seeing this, it's still a C? Excalibur? They tripping. That's the end of the episode, guys. If y'all enjoyed, like, subscribe, leave a comment, read them all, type into the next one. Fuck. That shit was hype as fuck. But like, I I I, I I'm I'm gonna record Tsukihime tomorrow, but I, I almost want to just like play Fate instead because I want to know like what's gonna happen, like what's gonna happen with with um Saber. You feel me? Like, how are we gonna get this settled? I I already know they took out the H scene, so we're not gonna like put our dick in her ass. And I'm pretty sure that scene was with Tosaka, right? Or some shit, I think. I think that scene was with Tosaka, not Saber anyway. I was fucking around there. But damn, how is this going to... Hmm. Hey, shit, we'll find out. Peace out, I love you, tap into the next one. Uh, I hope y'all are enjoying this series, because I am enjoying the fuck out of this series, man.